In this video, we're going to look at a couple ways to test a NPN bipolar junction transistor. That's all we're going to focus on in this video to figure out the pin layout. So, we're going to look at the C945. I just happen to have some. I never use one, but uh, I think I used it in a couple videos like this. But in uh, any case, that's the pin layout there. I got it from a data sheet. That's the best way to learn about the component. Look at the part number, do a Google search of that part number plus data sheet, and uh, find a data sheet, and uh, read all you can about it. And hopefully they're really clear about the pin layout. The 2N3904 I use in a lot of my videos. Again, I looked at the data sheet for this video to get those numbers, and uh, that is the pin layout. Plus, I already knew the pin layout. In any case, they have the uh, same schematic symbol right there. So the schematic symbol does not tell you the pin layout, even though it looks uh, really close to this one. You can see it's completely uh, different there. So you have to take this schematic symbol and attach the components to the right terminal based on the schematic symbol there. It probably won't say C, B, or E on it. You already got to know it. The collector is the line on this side of the bar without an arrow. And then on the same side of the bar, we have a line with an arrow. It's not pointing in. That helps you know that it's NPN. It's pointing out. And uh, that is the emitter right there. And then the bar on its own side, or the uh, line I mean, on its own side of that bar there, is the base right there. So the chemical makeup of an NPN bipolar junction transistor is a P-type material sandwiched between two N-type materials. That goes with uh, both of these transistors up here internally. The chemistry is uh, pretty close to the same. So they got some different properties, but it's a uh, p-type material between two n-type materials and then at uh, two of the terminals that could be the collector or the emitter same with that one collector or emitter but since it's an npn bipolar junction transistor the p-type material is the base right there so base there base there that's the p-type material that's the first thing to keep in mind if you're doing this manual testing of course look at the data sheet instead or get a transistor tester those are your best two options but uh, this will still be a fun little project to do. So P-type, N-type material, that's a diode right there if you only have a P-type next to an N-type. You get the P-type more positive, that's called an anode for a diode. You get the N-type material more negative, that's the cathode for a diode, it will conduct. So you have to limit current. We're gonna use a multimeter that automatically limits current. I think it just puts one milliamp of current through it, but it will know that we have it forward biased and that current is flowing right there. If we put the uh, negative probe on here, it's actually a black probe, but uh, we put the negative to the P-type material, the anode, and the more positive to the N-type material there, it will not conduct. That's a reverse bias diode. That's the direction that diodes do not conduct when a voltage is applied across them. Now when it comes to the transistor, you need to uh, keep the uh, voltage from collector to emitter uh, low if it's backwards or else it will start conducting. We'll get to that later, but the multimeter will definitely keep it low enough. Also, since we can already see this note, you can do this testing with the PNP bipolar junction transistor. Just remember that polarities are opposite. So it would be a PNP. And so to find the base for the PNP type material, that would be the more negative with more positive on both sides. But we're not really going to really worry about that in this video. So now multimeters typically have diode testing settings right there. So we go there. Right now it's continuity. That means if there's no resistance, you get an annoying beep. I hit select. Now you see the diode schematic there. And we have out of limits right now. So it's not conducting any current. That is what it is letting us. First, we are going to test this uh, red LED. So I know the anode is on top, cathode on bottom, unless I did mess up. And uh, so there you can see, we have the forward voltage of the LED. And uh, it's not very bright, because again, I believe it puts about one milliamp of current through it and only one milliamp of current. So there you go, I turned the lamp down. Should be able to see it light up. But anyways, you can see that forward voltage. If I reverse the probes there, so now I got the uh, red probe to the short lead the cathode, long lead the anode to the uh, black probe there. You can see that 
right now it's reverse bias this is the wrong polarity it won't conduct so I believe the gray band is right there so the rectifier diode there is conducting and we have a forward voltage of about 0.6 volts as we expect if we put it backwards so that is the cathode there we're getting more positive to the anode more negative there you can see nothing showing up on the display it's out of limit it's not conducting so our diode testing is going to be more like the uh, rectifier diode when it comes to this transistor so I already know this is the NPN bipolar junction transistor uh, the 2N3904 I mean but uh, let's start positive down here and we're gonna go up there you can see nothing showing up on the screen I just have these uh, three jumpers going to the three terminals nothing going to the screen let's work our way uh, positive there and test down here now you can see we got a diode drop right there and now a diode drop up there so it is the emitter at the bottom I do know that and uh, so we do know where the base is right now and we know it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor because it's p-type material we could also test on top again nothing will show up of course right there so that's the 2N3904 flat side to the right emitter to the bottom now we're gonna grab the uh, C945 right there and I believe the emitter is uh, at the bottom there or the uh, base I mean and I know it looks like I am I am wrong on that so yeah it was the emitter at the bottom base at the top that's right so there you can see base is definitely not the middle or the bottom here flat side again is to the right again I'm not familiar with this transistor so now you can see we uh, got diode connection there and diode conduction over there so we know that that is the p-type material it's the base of an NPN bipolar junction transistor so now figuring out the base was easy doing the diode test unfortunately the uh, collector and the emitter in relationship to base were unidentifiable except for they had slightly different forward voltages so you may be able to tell from that but I like this test better so we're gonna wire up the NPN bipolar junction transistor as a switch that is turned off so we're gonna do a test though to see if we have the collector on the uh, load side or if it's on the ground side right there we want the emitter on the ground side so this is an off switch which means that if we raise the uh, voltage to uh, 40 volts for the 2N3904 it should stay off and so since we're not sure if we have it in backwards or not we're actually going to start uh, quite a bit lower and work our way up slowly and you can see here that uh, from emitter to base it only has a maximum voltage rating of 6 volts so that means basically you have it backwards if you have it backwards you shouldn't have it uh, go above about uh, 6 volts we are going to exceed that though because we're doing a test we're just trying to figure out the pin layout of the part number if it does a little damage to the transistor or something we're just figuring out the uh, pin layout and then we would use that same uh, part number later on in a serious circuit but in any case the uh, C945 looks like if you put it in backwards it will probably break down at a slightly lower voltage right there but as you can see my power supply only goes up to 30 volts if we put it in the uh, right direction we will be uh, plenty low in voltage up to about 30 volts the transistor should stay off which it will if we have the pins lined up correctly if we put the emitter on the more positive side right there what's going to happen is that as I slowly raise the voltage up it's going to be somewhere around 15 volts I think by 15 volts for both transistors the LED will start lighting up suddenly even though it should be off because the base is to ground that's because it breaks down at that lower voltage there so I don't think that number is uh, right I think that's just their maximum voltage they suggest you put uh, reverse bias here making the emitter more positive than the base I don't think it breaks down there for sure at that voltage but uh, they don't want you to exceed that voltage 
So now we're going to start with the 2N3904. And remember, with the diode testing, we figured out the base was the middle pin. Also, I already knew that, and it's available on data sheets. But in any case, it's wired to be off right now. I do know the collector is on top and the emitter is on bottom, so it's wired correctly as an off switch right now. But let's pretend like we don't know that yet. We just know that uh, the collector or the emitter could be on top or bottom. So it's wired to be off. You can see if I move the uh, resistor over to the uh, positive supply, that puts a little base to emitter current, which turns the transistor on, which it would also do if it was backwards. We'll look at that coming up. So first off, this is what you should expect if it is wired properly. So we're going to uh, go up and uh, that LED would have been on right now if it was uh, backwards, at least by 15. And so again, I said we could go up to uh, 40 volts and there you can see we are at uh, 30 and the LED is still off. So now when we put this in backwards, we don't want to be up to uh, 30. We'll, uh, we'll go back down to six, I guess, right there. So I'm going to, uh, Remember, the uh, two ends are collector and emitter. Base is in the middle. That makes this one easier to test. And uh, so we're going to put it in backwards right now. So again, you can see the LED is still off, as we expect with an off switch right there. And uh, sorry, the uh, lamp was in a bad position. And uh, so remember, the data sheet doesn't want you to do uh, six volts backwards. But we're going to exceed that. You can see the LED starting to glow right now. I'll kind of shade it right there. And glowing quite a bit. So we have that emitter to base breakdown. It's starting to conduct, which is letting the emitter to collector conduct, which is bad. So that's how we knew it was backwards. And uh, so it'll still work though. Right now it's backwards at uh, this lower voltage. If I move the, uh, try not to block your view. I remove the resistor to the positive supply. There you can see it still works like a switch and uh, at uh, lower voltages, but it won't turn off at higher voltages. That is why you don't want it backwards. So you'd want to uh, fix that. And remember that uh, the emitter is the uh, left pin bottom there and then a uh, middle pin base collector on top. Now we have the C945 right there. We determined through diode testing, the flat side is to the right now. So the uh, pin onto the right, if you're looking at the front or the pin on top, if you are got the flat side to the right, as we do there, is the base. We already determined that. So we got that wired to be turned off. Here I have a one kilo ohm resistor, which is why we just slowly raise the uh, voltage until we see the LED light. So long lead the anode to the resistor, short lead the uh, cathode down there. We're not sure which uh, one of these two pins is collector or emitter, other than we could look at the pin layout of the uh, data sheet. But again, remember, we're just doing testing as if we don't know. So we're starting at uh, six volts right now, again, and uh, working our way up to see if the LED starts lighting. There you can see it's lighting. And I think it's lighting up more than uh, the 2N3904 did because it has a lower uh, breakdown voltage from emitter to base. So there you can see that uh, it should not have lit up, it should have stayed off if it were wired correctly. So we're just gonna quickly swap these around and uh, this resistor, again, will go towards the more positive side of the supply there. And we'll put it one row away from that jumper. These resistors are kind of thin leaded, so they bend a little easier. So we gotta remember to put the long lead, the anode to the resistor, short lead the cathode down one spot. Pretty sure I got that there. And so it was wired to be turned off. We could still had turned it on. I should have demonstrated that uh, like this, even when uh, it was backwards. But uh, in any case, the main thing was that it broke down at a low voltage. So if the voltage ever rose enough in a circuit, it would, uh, turn on when it shouldn't. So we got uh, six and I feel confident. We'll just go right to 16, LED is off. 26, LED is off. So it is a circuit that is correctly wired to stay off. And even at 10 volts, it's safe. We already did demonstrate this, I think, that uh, you can turn it on normally like that. So in any case, quite a bit to this video. Hopefully it all made sense and you enjoyed it. 
Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. If you can donate to one of my links below, that would help out a ton. But just watching videos helps a ton. I appreciate that. I'll see you in the next video.